It's Tuesday, May the 4th, 2021, the date in the church calendar that is set aside for the commemoration of Friedrich Winniken, pastor and missionary. Some of you may know his name well. He's one of the founders of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, a rather critical individual in the uh, opening of our church body's history. He came uh, to the United States in 1810. Uh, he ended up becoming a pastor initially uh, right in Fort Wayne, Indiana, was one of the founders of Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne. Uh, he also then uh, was supported by the Missionary Society of Wilhelm Lea so that he might be a missionary in Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, that general area, doing a significant amount of outreach to the Native American population. He also was the second uh, president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and uh, had a rather critical role in uh, defining the uh, confessional character of our synod. So we give thanks to God, rightly so, for the good work that he accomplished through Friedrich Winneken. Now, on Tuesdays, we uh, learn, though, from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And last week, we started into looking at the Matthew's account of the resurrection. We went through the first 10 verses. Let's take a look at verses 11 through 15. This is uh, not as uh, familiar territory. I'm sure you've heard it read many times before, but it's something that we maybe don't spend as much time reflecting upon. While they were still going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests about all that had taken place. Now, this is flowing right out of the first 10 verses. And while they were still going, that is, while the women were still going, still leaving the tomb after finding it empty and having the angel greet them, and then Jesus ended up greeting them and such. Uh, and you may remember we had heard in those first 10 chapters that when the guard that was watching over the tomb uh, saw the angel, they fell down as dead men. Men. And so now they are going back into the city to tell the chief priests everything that's happened. We've seen this angelic being. Uh, the stone was rolled away and such. And so they're reporting that the, also that the tomb is empty. Now, we don't have specific mention in Matthew that they saw the resurrected Christ, but they certainly saw that the tomb was empty. They saw the women's astonishment and such. So they give that report. The big question for us is going to be, how is that report received by the chief priests? Is it a moment to say, ah, this is exactly what Jesus said would happen, that he was going to ra rise on the third day and... Has it all come to pass? Maybe Jesus is who he says he is. But instead we read this. When they had assembled with the elders, that would be the chief priests assembling with the elders, and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. Now you can see a, a multitude of sins here. First of all, they're telling them to lie. Secondly, they're paying them off. They're bribing them for that lie. And also, they're giving them assurance that they're going to cover over their lie. You see, these guards who are given charge to watch over the tomb, their life is now in jeopardy. They could be killed for falling asleep on duty and allowing Jesus to be stolen away. You might even ask the question, well, how would they know that the disciples had stolen away the body of Jesus if they were supposedly asleep? Because after all, if they're asleep, they don't know what happened. They would wake up and just find the tomb empty and Jesus not there. But nevertheless, this is the story that is put together that uh, is, and the soldiers are even paid off in order to speak this story. So they took the money and did as they were directed. Now, there's an opportunity for us also maybe to think about how our own motivations at times can be suspect, how we can be bought off, maybe not bought off financially, that certainly can happen, but bought off otherwise, that in order to ingratiate ourselves with others, we will do what we know is wrong just so that we stay in their good graces. It's a moment for us to repent of when we too are manipulated by others when we know what we're doing is wrong. And this story has been spread among the Judeans to this very day. So Matthew tells us, and he's writing probably 20, maybe more years after the uh, resurrection of Christ, that, uh, that this story is still circulating out there, that this is how people are explaining why they don't find the body of Jesus anymore, that uh, it was stolen away by the disciples and such. That's why his tomb is empty. It's interesting that there are false stories that just perpetuate. 
This is true often with propaganda. We see that with political propaganda, false stories are put out and they remain in place because they're never properly refuted and such. And even if they're properly refuted, people cling to lies. And that's certainly a big part of what is here, that seeing should be believing. But in this instance, seeing is not believing for them. They've got the evidence right before them, but they are so committed to a specific belief that they refuse to go with what is actually in front of them, an empty tomb. So this also becomes an opportunity for you and I to pray that the Lord would be at work, the Holy Spirit working through the word, to convict all people. We can set forth good apologetic evidence regarding the death and resurrection of Christ, the most well-attested event of ancient history, the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. The evidence is overwhelming. But people cling to their own positions because they have so much invested in them. So let's pray that the Holy Spirit works through the preaching of the gospel so that people first come to faith knowing the goodness of God in Christ, how he has won our salvation, and that therefore also they would take hold of the good message that he is risen from the dead. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that you brought forth your Son from the dead in order to bring us life everlasting. Be at work among all people, so that they too might rejoice in the empty tomb, not explaining it away, it away, but instead rejoicing that your power is sufficient, not only to raise the dead, to raise your Son from the dead, but even to go about the far greater miracle of forgiving our sin. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.